What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use macros inside of Cubase Pro. Let's get right to it. All right, so macros are the extension of what key commands are. And if you don't know what key commands are, I'm gonna link on the top right, the key command video I made for Cubase Pro. So let's just dive right into it. So what a macro is, it's sort of like a key command, except you could do multiple functions at the same time. So let me show you how to set it up right now. And then I'll show you a macro that I use almost always for my mixing. So we're gonna go into edit and we're gonna go to where it says key commands. Once you go into key commands, you're gonna see that this key command window opens up just like the regular key commands. But in the bottom, you're going to see something that says macros. Now, if you don't see this, you just got to hit this button where it says show macros. And then this bottom half will show up. Now, what macros are, again, is a series of steps that you're going to be able to do with just one single key command. So, for example, this mixing setup. So when I go to mix, all I want to see are my audio tracks and I want to see my stereo out. So I want to hide everything else except my audio tracks and my stereo out. Also, I chose to have my inserts and sends to be expanded when I do this as well. So as you can see, I could do all of these five things with just one key command, which I have um, set up in the macro section, which I'll show you in a minute. So in order to set up a macro, all you need to do is hit new. And let's say I'm going to create this mixing setup again. So I'm just going to call it mixing setup. Okay, so it says I already have that. So let's just do mixing setup number two. So here I have my mixing setup number two. So now where you find it inside of the key command list is there's actually a folder called macro. If you open it, you're going to see here is where you can apply the mixing setup key command. So for example, my mixing setup key command, the regular one is command option shift M. I like doing my macros with command option shift simply because since it's a bigger kind of key command. I like to use three different kinds of commands in order to engage the macros instead of just a key command where it could just be option and a letter or, you know, command and letter. So before we go ahead and add a key command to mixing setup two, let's go ahead and populate this with a series of instructions. So the first thing we're going to do to recreate this folder structure is open up the mixer tab. And we're going to go ahead and list all of the instructions we want this macro to do. So I want to, let's see, I want to hide anything that's not an audio track. So for example, I know I have inputs. I want to hide my inputs. I want to hide my instruments. And notice how I'm hitting here where it says command add. And now it's populating the section mixing setup too. I'm going to hide instruments. I'm going to hide any MIDI tracks I have. And I'm going to leave it at that. And also what I want to do is expand, let's say, my routing settings. I want to expand my sends. And I want to expand my inserts. This is what I want this macro to do. Now, one thing that's important to remember is that it works in order from top to bottom. In this case, it really doesn't matter because it's just going to perform all of these functions at the same time. If you do any more complicated macros, then you're going to want to put them in order in the way that you want it to happen. But in this case, we can leave it just like this. I'm going to go ahead and collapse this menu. And I'm going to go ahead and collapse the top menu as well. And I'm going to open up the macro section. Now, when I open up the macro section, I'm going to click on the mixing setup number two. And I'm going to assign a key command to it. So since this is a test, I'm going to do command option shift T for test. And here, as we know from the key commands video, you can see whether this is assigned to anything. And in this case, it's assigned to nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit assign on this macro. And now we have our key command for this mixing setup too. All I need to do is press OK now. And I need to find the mixer menu, which happens to be right behind this one. And before we do that, actually, I need to populate some tracks here. So let me put an instrument track here. Let's just put a few. Let's say I have six instrument tracks. Okay, so we have six instrument tracks. Let's say I'm going to have 
a few MIDI tracks. So let's say I have four MIDI tracks. And let's go ahead and add some audio tracks because of course we want everything to be hidden except audio tracks. So we have to make sure that we have at least some audio tracks. That way we can see the functions of these macros. So now let's go ahead and jump right back to our mixer. And now you see that we have some instrument tracks, we have some audio tracks, and we have some MIDI tracks. Now remember, the macro said I want to hide instrument, MIDI, anything else but audio tracks, and then I want them to expand the inserts, the send, and the routing setting. Now if I go ahead and do my key command right now, so it's going to be command option shift T. So everything but the audio and outs are going to be hidden as well as my routing settings and the inserts and sends are expanded here. If I click the macro once again, you're gonna see that's going to populate what I had before. So all of my instruments, my inputs and MIDI tracks are gonna be shown again. If I press it again, you see how effective this is to just hide all of my tracks all at the same time. And now I don't need to go into my, you know, visibility setting, you know, opening up this tab and then having to, you know, click one by one what I want to see or what I don't want to see. I do it all within this macro. And so now you can start to see the power of using macros inside of Cubase. So again, this is just a short example on how you use macros. You could do absolutely anything with macros. So let me show you one more cool macro that I've created for myself. So let's say I want to do a project with any kind of video. I have a film score macro that's going to allow me to pull up a time signature track, a tempo track, video and audio channel, and then put them all in a folder as well as split the screen so that everything is populated on the top portion of this dividing track list here. So check this out. This is pretty cool. And this is so you can see the extent that you could take these macros to. So my macro key command for this is going to be command option shift and F. So right here, what happened is the marker just tells you what you want to call the marker track. I'm just going to call it marker. This is the only thing that I have to take care of because the marker, it prompts some kind of uh, thing to be written. Unfortunately, there's not a way in, in the macros to be able to autofill this. So this is the only thing I need to drag up into it. But as you can see, the other three were split and thrown up here, a video tempo signature and a marker track. And as you can see, again, the split here. Now I don't need to populate it one by one. So let's go into the macros really quick and see what I have in here, which created this. So in my film scoring template, I put to add a track, so video, add a tempo track, add a signature track, add a marker track, and then I have in the project setting to divide the track list. This is the order that I chose, and if we look at it, we have video on top, tempo, then signature marker, then it did the divide, of course, because the marker track asks you what you want to call it. I had to drag that one up because I actually have to type that one in. But everything else worked just fine. And that is really the extent you could take this and more if you want. So if there's something that you need to do, especially often, and you don't want to go clicking one by one, you could just set up a macro, put a key command, and Cubase will do all of the functions all at the same time. And if you add up all those little seconds, then you could see how long you're actually really taking, let's say in a week, to just complete that simple task, which could, you could do in one key command instead of doing it in four to five different clicks. If you have any questions throughout the video, just go ahead and leave your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Also, don't forget to check out the John Moon Studios store. I have a variety of merch with the official John Moon Studios logo on it. So go ahead and check it out. As always, don't forget to share with your musician friends. I'll see you guys soon.